two years ago, my father learned that he needed to have a very serious heart surgery. He needed to have three heart valves replaced. He needed a quadruple bypass. And my father did not want to have the surgery. There was a 10 to 15% chance that he would not survive the surgery. My sister and I very much wanted him to have the surgery, but we also wanted what was best, what was safest for him. So the family arranged a meeting where my parents and I and my sister would speak with the surgeon. So we, we were sitting in the office with the surgeon, um, I noticed that when he, he came in, he uh, immediately made eye contact with every one of us, literally shook the hands of everyone there, and then took a seat directly across from my dad. And the purpose of the meeting was to answer our questions, uh, my sister and, and my questions. And uh, we had many. I remember the very first question I asked my dad surgeon is, what are we looking at? if my dad chooses to not have the surgery. The surgeon looked me directly in the eye and he said, if your dad does not have this surgery, you're looking at one of three outcomes. Uh, he will be dead in less than two years. Uh, second outcome is he is confined to a wheelchair. His body will be so frail, his heart so weak that he will no longer be able to walk or he will be bedridden. I didn't like hearing the news. I mean, that talk about delivering bad news uh, to, to a patient, that is bad news. It was hard for my father to hear, though he'd heard it before, very hard for us. But I appreciated the way the surgeon delivered that news. He was direct, he was clear, he was confident in delivering that news. I followed up that question with, okay, if he does have the surgery, what are the risks involved? And he confirmed that there is a, a risk of, of death, a 10 to 15% chance. He said it's possible that your father's heart is too weak to endure the surgery. He may have a heart attack. He may have a stroke. And to that, I followed up with, well, you know, if, if he does have a heart attack or a stroke in surgery, I mean, he he is there in the best care, right? I mean, he's got uh, surgeons, he's got, he's in a hospital, he's got a whole medical team. So his chances of survival are great, right? Um, the surgeon said, I, I am telling you, the risks are there. 10 to 15% chance um, of a heart attack or stroke or other causes that could lead to death. Yes, he will have the best people right there, but I cannot guarantee that your father would survive this surgery. Again, it's not what I wanted to hear, but I appreciated the surgeon's honesty, his clarity, and his directness. When I consider that surgeon's approach, I realize that when we are talking to customers and we have to deliver bad news, when we have to say something we know they don't want to hear, we can use that exact same approach. And, and I say that because my family and I, while we didn't like hearing that news, we respected it. I noticed that we were calm, we were able to take it in and then go and make the decision that was best for us. Ultimately, it was my dad's decision, but we were there to support him to make his decision. You know, doctors, surgeons, trauma teams, they have uh, on a regular basis, they have to deliver bad news to people. And as you can imagine, they are highly trained in how to do this. In fact, medical professionals use three keys. The three keys are the person's attitude, the person who's delivering the news, the attitude in which they deliver the news. And the second key that they fiercely focus on is clarity of the message. And then finally, their ability to answer questions. 
When you have to deliver bad news to a customer, I want you to try these three keys. So let's look at the first one, the attitude of the person giving the bad news. When you have to give bad news to a customer, your attitude needs to be one of non-resistance. You know, it is what it is. Uh, we don't need to fret or have anxiety about the fact that we are in this position. We don't need to regret that we have to be um, the, the messenger with bad news. Just have the attitude of it is what it is. This is the situation and I have to deliver this news. Additionally, I want you to have an attitude of empathy, of genuine concern. The surgeon definitely had empathy. He wasn't overly emotionally involved. He wasn't distant or callous or uncaring. He was right there in the middle with an empathic response. And so your attitude as you deliver the message needs to be one of empathy, of genuine concern. And that way you can put the other person at ease and you enhance your credibility even when you're delivering news that they do not want to hear. The second key is the clarity of the message. I, I sure appreciate it that our surgeon was clear. There was no fluff. He didn't use big words or medical terminology. It was just straight talk. He didn't waste words. He got right to the point. And that is how you need to be when you deliver bad news. You're direct. You assertively say what you need to say. You don't add fluff to it. You don't sugarcoat it. You say what you need to say. And then again, that, that third principle is the ability to answer questions. You need to have the knowledge and the confidence and the communication ability to answer questions. My sister and I and my mother, we had several questions and the surgeon was patient as he answered our questions. I noticed he would talk or turn and face whoever asked the question. He was very comprehensive. He backed the answers up with fact, um, which I very much appreciated. He encouraged uh, questions. He was in no hurry to move on. He was there to answer our questions. When you have to deliver bad news to your customers, don't resist it. Don't become defensive. It is what it is. You have to deliver that news. And so make the most of it with an empathic and genuine attitude. Be direct and crystal clear in your delivery of the message and be open to questions. When you do these three things, I think you'll find that you're able to deliver bad news with much more confidence, diplomatic with tact and the receiver will be much more open to hearing the message that you have to deliver.